Hi everyone, this is Lara again. I am here with Amir Abdurrahman. Hi Amir. Hi, happy to be here. Good, good. So tell us about you. Who's Amir? Let's get it started. You know, talk to us about what you do and how you do it. Yeah, that's an interesting question. So who's Amir? Um, so I guess I'm a, I'm, I'm a few things, you know. Um, first, you know, I, I like to think of myself as like a family guy, you know, uh, a friend, a brother. Um, I love building relationships and being someone who's just, you know, connected with my surroundings and, and someone who's just, I guess I try to have a, you know, uh, I try to stay in touch with, with everything that's kind of happening around me. And uh, more so than anything, I guess on a, on a more professional level, I'm a community organizer and uh, an activist. And um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, to put it, I guess, really simply, I could, I could really dive into a few things, but uh, just to put it simply, I guess that's where I'd, uh, I'd, I'd put myself. What made you interested in this subject? first of all, and then maybe you can lead us through how you got involved with the period movement um, and the initiatives that you helped create mm -hmm. in, in that organization. Yeah, uh, so that's, you know, the most common question I get. As a non-menstruator, why are you <laughs> in this space, right? Um, and, you know, it's, it's very interesting. When I had first got involved with period, um, and I, I say this pretty openly. I, you know, if if you had come to me in in high school and uh, even said the word period, I probably would have cringed, you know. And even probably for my first couple of years of, of university. But um, you know, as time went on, and and uh, I actually I ran a a blog. I started a blog for uh, students at the university for an organization I was a part of called Humanism in Medicine. And in that blog was called Out on a Limb. And basically, the goal with that was to give a platform to students to be creative and to really represent themselves the way they want to be represented, not the way the school wanted to represent them, right? Um, and so uh, we brought on, there was a bunch of different topics people wanted to write about. And one, one of the students that was a part of the organization, um, she wanted to write about an issue called period poverty. Now, in my mind, I don't know what period poverty is and why that's an issue. Um, but, you know, I was president and, and editor of the blog. And so I had to read through all these these uh, blogs and edit them. And um, I read through it. And as I'm reading through it, it kind of blew my mind really on uh, how there were menstruators across the country that were um, suffering from this issue called period poverty, which is a lack of access to menstrual products. And so many of them were using trash. Um, many of them were using just bundles of, um, you know, toilet paper or um, even just paper. Um, and so, you know, hearing something like that, it was very eye-opening in the sense of like, I've, I've never even thought that that would be an issue. And so, um, you know, once we published the piece, I had got back to the to to the girl about the one who wrote it, the author of the piece, and I had, you know, I said, "Wow, like this is crazy." I appreciate you writing about this, kind of informing me, that kind of thing, and that that was the end of it. But you know, about a month later, she actually got back to me and she asked if I would be willing to help her, you know, uh, start this chapter of this larger organization at the Ohio State University called Period. So we started this chapter, I helped her start this chapter, but I, even then I was kind of like, cool, like I'm just gonna help her start this chapter. You know, this is not really my space, right? Um, uh, more so than anything because of the stigma that was around menstruation, right? There's such a large stigma around it. And because of that, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna just, you know, as a non menstruate I'm just gonna kind of stay away from that um, field of things. I also didn't wanna be, you know, that guy who's in there like talking about periods and it's like, you know, as someone who doesn't have periods, I didn't want to be the, the smart ass. So um, eventually one thing led to another where I got more involved and I started to realize that this was actually an issue that was happening in our backyards, right? Um, when we started talking to people about period poverty and how people use, you know, don't have access to menstrual products, you know, they'd be like, oh, oh, is that happening? And, you know, overseas, is that what happens in these, you know, third world countries 
And it always kind of made me cringe when they said that because I'm like, no, like if you walk down North High Street, yeah, there's people there just down North High Street that are actually struggling with this issue. And that always blew people's mind is, is you know, we always think that when we talk about all these issue about like famine and, and um, you know, lack of access to clean water and all these issues where people directly think of, you know, countries in the Middle East, countries in Africa, countries in Southeast Asia, they don't think, you know, North America. Now over here, we don't have that, right? But look at Flint, Michigan, if you really want to talk about that. So, um, you know, that was that was very eye-opening. And then talking to people about it, I saw how, how that attracted more people into the movement. And, uh, you know, with that, it was it was very very important for me to to stay involved with something that didn't necessarily affect me personally on a day to day basis. I wanted to feel like I was having an impact on something that was greater than me, that was bigger than just myself, um, and really even just the people in, around me and my surroundings. But I wanted to have an impact on really the community and um, at a large. So, you know, getting involved with that was was very interesting, and um, what we what we saw was when we spoke to people about this issue, the main things we'd hear was people, you know, they would kind of cringe and take a step away. And and a lot of the guys would usually say, the non-menstruator guys, they would usually say how, you know, oh man, that's, you know, that's not for me. Like quote, like quoting that, that's often what they would say to me. Ah, that's not for me, you know? And, and I understood it because I was, I was that, but, what I didn't understand is why people didn't want to at least give it a chance to listen to the issue that was happening, right? Um, and so what we realized is what we had to do was get creative. How are you going to reach out to a group that doesn't want to listen to an issue that you care about, right? How are you going to do that? And that comes down to public health as well. That's really important in public health. I did four years of public health. And what we saw with public health is that often people don't want to talk about the issues at hand. And if they don't want to talk about the issues at hand, they're not going to be fixed. Right. So how do you force them in a way to do that? You know, get them interested in this issue that you care about, that you think is extremely important without exactly forcing their hand to do that. Right. With making them feel like this is something that they actually want to do, that they care for. And the way you do that is getting creative and figuring out what that person specifically is interested in right? Focusing on their interests and building around that. And so that's exactly what we did. So we went out and we worked with Period National, the National Period Organization. And they hired us as, uh, uh, brought me on and, and uh, you know, my colleague as uh, policy coordinators at the time and campaign leads for a campaign called National Period Day. And what National Period Day was is we wanted, we wanted to create one day where all we're going to do is talk about periods and period poverty. That's it, all right? We just wanted to bring awareness to this issue of period poverty. And what we uh, we had sat down on a table and we asked ourselves, okay, well, what do people like to do? Well, the truth is, people like to go to events and post pictures on Instagram. That's just a matter of fact, right? Um, they enjoy being in, you know, being out with their friends. They enjoy these things where they can, you know, pick up their phone and say, oh, look, I'm in this and this place and with this and this person and we're having a good time. And, you know, uh, there was also this larger conversation out there around, around how, um, people are just acting like they're activists, but they're not real activists. You know, they're just there for the picture. They're just there, you know, for the video. Um, but to me, I actually figured I'll take that because if they're going to be at that event, then they're going to learn something, right? They will learn something, whether they're there for the right reasons or not, they'll learn something and they'll share that thing eventually. So what we did was we, we built this event where all across the country, um, knowing that people would enjoy being around each other and, uh, we called it national peer day. And what it was, was, um, it were, it was, 50 rallies all across the country in every single state. Uh, well, it was actually 55 rallies uh, across the world, but 50 rallies all across the country. Every single state had a rally. And we 
gave space for people to speak at each of these rallies, right? So everyone had a platform for themselves to step up and, and talk about their story, tell their story. Everybody loves to tell their story, you know, they enjoy that. So that was very attractive to a lot of people. Um, and a lot of people really, you know, they fell into it and, and really uh, got very involved uh, with the issue the more they learned about it. Like me, not many people knew that there was this issue of period poverty in our backyards. They might have heard about it and thought it was, you know, in some other country. But when they were shocked to find out that, you know, down the street from their house or from their school, this was an issue that was happening, they got more involved. And so, um, you know, we had, again, 50 rallies, probably about 10,000 people out in the streets. And uh, we petitioned our legislators to, to pass policy to remove something called the tampon tax, which is luxury taxation of menstrual products across the country, which about 30 states still hold. Um, and, uh, you know, we raised our voices and we built this platform for people to share their stories about their, you know, their personal stories of having their periods and why, why they felt ashamed of it and how we have to break that stigma and how we have to really begin to talk about periods and show that it's a natural bodily function, not some odd thing that happens to the few of us, but at a bare minimum, 50% of us. Um, and so, you know, by doing that, we actually got lots of recognition. Uh, at that point, that was actually the beginning of the presidential uh, debates. And there was like 101 presidential candidates, if you remember in the beginning, <laughs> um, five of which actually endorsed um, National Period Day, one of them being Kamala Harris. So, you know, it was it was a, a fun ride for sure. And what we saw out of that was um, we brought a lot of awareness to this issue and that was the goal. Um, that was all all through creativity and, and bringing people together. And I think that's the most important uh, part here. And, and that's how we're gonna really have an impact on our world, so, yeah. The young activists, how are they, and, and designers, how are they, what's your advice on creating change in this world with the work that they're doing? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a question, yeah. Um, you know, I think every single field has something in common. And I think that one thing to me uh, is the arts and creativity. And it's not presented that way, ever, actually. Uh, you know, even when we look at school, the first thing they get cut usually is the arts programs, uh, which is very odd to me because when you look at really the world we live in, um, the arts and, and being creative plays such a big role in it all. And so, you know, the biggest thing that I've seen and, and really I don't even like to, to necessarily give advice because it's so different for so many people. But what I will say is this is what I've seen and this is what I believe would be you know very impactful and that's staying true to yourself and staying creative um and staying creative with everything that you do right we don't we don't need more of the mainstream and and everything that we're seeing left and right right what we want is to see people for who they are i want to see the differences in each person i want to see all these different things that people have within them. And I wanna see that be shared because that's what's unique to you, right? Um, I think bringing, showing your, your uniqueness and bringing that out in the world and being creative and how you present that um, is extremely important. And we, we've seen that, we've seen the importance of that even in activism, right? Um, we have so many different groups. Back in, in, in summer, I went to Kentucky, I went to Louisville. And we were there for uh, a march um, for Breonna Taylor, who was murdered at the hands of police in Louisville. And I was part of the Good Trouble 65, and 65, <laughs> 65 of us got arrested that day. Uh, and what we saw that day was, when you look around you, it wasn't just black folk, it wasn't just white folk, it wasn't just Arabs. Uh, you know, it wasn't just South Asians. There was so many different groups that came together, so many different unique individuals that came together with all their different experiences, with all the different unique experiences and racism that they faced in their lives, that their family faced in their lives, all connected and came together to fight for this one woman. 
And that it's, it's beautiful to see, you know, it was beautiful to see because when you have all these different things, all these differences and people and they're coming together, that's, that's one of the most important things we can be doing because that's what creates change and has an impact, right? That's what shows that, hey, there's something happening here that's extremely important. And it shows our legislators and our policymakers that it's something that has to be addressed and we're not going anywhere. And so, um, you know, being a part of groups like that, I've seen how, how creativity and uniqueness has actually made us a lot stronger, right? Um, within the menstrual movement, if it was only menstruators talking about this issue, unfortunately, it's not. It's it doesn't have as much weight as bringing together more groups, menstruators and non-menstruators, right? And when I say as much weight, I mean in the eyes of legislators and policymakers, they want to see as many people that come together that put pressure on them. That's what makes them allows them to make change. And so you need to have both sides of the group, right? Uh, if we want to talk about issues like climate change, if you're only going to have, you know, Gen Z coming out and talking about it, there's not enough weight behind that. I need millennials. I need Gen X. I need all these different, you know, I need the baby boomers. You know, I, I need all of them really to come together and talk about this issue of climate change. Uh, you know, so uh, it's really bringing together all these different groups with with unique experiences to talk about how an issue is affecting them to talk about how this is, you know, making changes a good thing for them and how it's going to better their lives and better their communities. Um, that's what's really going to allow us to have an impact on our community and our world. And so, you know, uh, being something we're, we're blessed with, I think, is is age and being, you know, having having lived through this difficult time because it's it's really going to bring us a lot of perspective moving forward uh, even though it was very hard to get through and it still is i mean we're not through it all yet um and so you know along with being unique and staying creative i think it's um doing your best to to listen and, and learn and, and share your perspective and hear other people's perspective on on different ideas and different things that are happening around them and within their lives uh, because that's also going to allow you to grow as a person um, and have a better outlook on on people, a more inclusive out, outlook on the world and the people around you. Um, and so, you know, it's there's there's a lot of things that we can be doing, but those are are the main ones I'd say uh, you know that we should be focusing on. And then, you know, as designers and as creatives, I mean, y'all have such a <laughs> Y'all have such a huge role in this world and in this uh, society and our in our communities. Um, like I said, from everything from healthcare to activism, it plays such a large role uh, because we we need we need the creatives. We need <clears throat> we need the designers to help us better understand our communities. They're the ones who are allowing us, who are putting us in a position to understand each other. Right? They're building that portal if you will, between one side and the other. Um, and I think it's extremely important for them to do that and do that in their own unique ways um, because, you know, that's going to really help us uh, come together and, and, and build a better uh, society for everyone.